So uh, a few years ago, I came across uh, something called a homeo block device, and I was interested in getting that someday, but I just haven't had the money for it. And um, the other day, I was just watching The Apprentice, and there was somebody on there who had like a really cramped-looking face and really closed eyes, and and just had kind of a personality match. And I was just thinking about how I feel bad that I have that. You know, I was didn't have the best nutrition as a kid, and I feel like my eyes have been too closed for a long time. So. I was just like, you know, why don't I just try pushing on my jaw with my thumbs? Because um, I've heard that some people do this themselves and that they've gotten some benefits and I haven't really been able to track anybody down. It looks like there used to be a video on YouTube about it, but not anymore. So I was just doing this the other day and I had a really, really unusual and interesting experience that I think could be really um, powerful. So what I did is I just put my thumbs in like this and just sort of pushed outward on my palette and I also do this. And just push up on it. So I was doing that, and I would do it like every 15 minutes, and I, I, it was kind of like I felt like some movement, and um, felt like my. And then at a certain point, I just sat down, and I was like, "Oh my God, I feel like my genes are changing," and I, because I had seen a video about the homey block that says that it's not just that it makes your palate bigger; it's that it activates the genes involved in facial development, and it, your body basically takes the message that oh, my palate is expanding. And it says, oh, maybe I should also grow more cheekbones and more, more of a like a elevated uh, eye sockets and more chin and you know et cetera, all this stuff. And so that's why when you see the before and after pictures of people with the homeo block, they look so much healthier and like hotter and more attractive after they've used it because they've had more of a full facial development. And it seems like so much of what we see as attractiveness, like facial symmetry, cheekbones, and uh, clear skin and everything is just a, a really good measure for health and, and we've basically evolved to see healthy healthy looking people as attractive and um, that could be also part of why healthy-ish attractive people are more dominant in society it's just that we've evolved to have kind of a dominant hierarchy where healthy anyway so I um, I noticed a lot of interesting changes and it wasn't just my palate so here's what I noticed. Um, for a while, it felt like my eyes were like moving outward, and when I opened my eyes and I was like looking at stuff, it felt like the vision was coming in from a higher, angle, like a like further apart, like rather than just being like focusing like this. I felt like I was focusing differently from wider apart. I felt also like there was like expansion in the middle of my head. Um, my boyfriend said I looked different. I I, I do look different, which is slightly different. Um, I'm starting to wear contacts now because I don't want my glasses to like push on my face right now if I'm going through any kind of changes. Um, I also, after that, there was this big sensation of like facial development, like feeling like my my cheekbones were going to be growing, feeling some changes in my eye sockets and my chin, and it was, I guess the way I describe it is it's like, you know those Guy Fox masks that are like a white mask and like that smiling guy, it was that kind of feeling of just like, you know, just much more like features, basically, bone features. Um, and then I had some more feelings that were like not even connected to my face. I had the sense that I was like, oh, I want to like sit back and have better posture. And I've seen other people that do push up on their face like this. They're like, oh, I just have better posture. And I think that that might be part of like if you're getting facial development and you're growing properly, but I was like, oh, you must be getting good nutrition. Maybe we should set you up to be a dominant primate. Because it seems like there's a lot in our genes that kind of tries to decide are we going to be dominant or submissive. And so certain things like chronic stress will put us into the submissive kind of unhealthy category, whereas things like expressing ourselves or good nutrition can change that and put us more in the dominant category. And uh, I read a lot about this in the book Lights Out, about how your genes kind of like talk to you and you do certain things your genes will decide on. Maybe you're not really cut out to be a dominant person. <laughs> like if you're having massive dysregulation of your circadian rhythm and stuff. Um, and some people theorize that like depression and a lot of mental illness are part of that um, basically evolved mechanism to kind of sort people into so that not everybody's trying to be dominant in the in the group but that people will kind of figure out their place. Um, and I also felt like my shoulders were going to be growing wider um, and then I felt like my hips were going to be getting wider and you know it's a big problem in our society. People's hips aren't big enough to get the babies through sometimes, and a lot of that has to do with epigenetics and nutrition, inadequate nutrition during you know, hip development. And then something weird happened where I felt like my gut felt better. 
I know like I have a lot of gut problems, a lot of people with autism have gut problems, and I guess the way I would describe it, it feels like my gut is like intelligent you now. Like it, it feels like there's actually neurons in my gut doing things. And like I, I, something happened and I felt bad about something and I actually had like a gut feeling about it where like I felt it in my gut before my head. And it feels almost like my gut is now, like my intestines can actually like look at things coming through and make a decision about them. Whereas in the past it just felt like it was all dead and just kind of a wasteland. Like there's nothing there and no, no, no intelligence or neurons. And so I wonder if something about our diet and epigenetics all this is tied together as people get a bad gut and poor craniofacial development and, and small hips and there's a lot of problems. What's so exciting to me is to realize that there might be some way to trigger this kind of change even though I'm past the typical age for cranial development and you know, bone growth. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people that use the homeoblock even later into life for wrinkles in their old age and um, so, like, if they can have that kind of growth, then I should certainly be able to do that in my 20s. And it just seems like maybe this is just like a trick for some way to trigger your facial development in a host of other genes. There might be, you know, hundreds of genes that get involved. Um, since then, I've noticed that, like, certain things food-wise seem to make it like, more strong, and then other things seem to take away from it. Like, B12 and folate and everything definitely seems to add to it, because... I've noticed this ever since I started taking methylation supplements that any other changes that I'm trying to make in my body happen much faster because it seems like my body is able to use the methylation to actually change my genes faster. So like, say that I do positive thinking, my body like adjusts more quickly. It just like this, the rate of change in my life has gotten a lot faster now that I have um, methylation to actually accomplish the genetic changes I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, it's like talking to your body in a currency that it understands. You know, like your body, and I'm very aware now of like all the communication that goes on in my body. Like, I ate some fermented foods last night, and I felt like they were getting in there, and like they were going to try to figure out, oh, where are we now? What kind of a body are we in? My body was trying to like communicate with the bacteria, and there's all this communication. Like nutrition is telling your body, here's the kind of environment you're in. Here's what you should do, and then foods have an impact on your gene regulation and epigenetics and there's just like I was just reading yesterday chokeberry affects your genes and like it's all this like everybody's trying to talk to everybody to figure out what's the what's the environment and how should we be because it's like our bodies have so many pre-programmed options uh, that we have evolved to have and depending on the situation it will just pick whichever one seems to be the best one and sometimes you can get stuck in one and it's hard to get out of that equilibrium but it definitely feels like there's different equilibrium that your body already has programmed into it um, so you don't have to like reinvent the wheel. Other people, uh, your ancestors have created these programs and uh, anyway. Uh, so the things that definitely make this go faster are eating um, like vitamin K rich foods um, and like fat soluble vitamin rich foods. And that's what, you know, Western Price says, you need the um, cod liver oil and, and X factor from butter oil. The main thing that seems to be the difference for me is taking um, grass-fed ghee. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because I, I read about this um, thing a while ago, like maybe a year or two ago, and I was, I was pushing on my job, but nothing really happened. And I didn't have this, like, massive change because I wasn't on methylation supplements and I wasn't eating natural vitamin K and it wasn't having those kind of western fried foods at the time. So, um, I'm going to keep doing this and um, at kind of a slow rate and I'll just kind of see what happens. But um, in a lot of ways I feel like it's giving me a, a second chance to undo kind of the damage that I had from basically being anorexic as a teenager and having a lot of stuff in my body just be small and malformed. Oh yeah, sorry, the last thing that I noticed is I felt like my arms were going to get shorter and then my spine would get longer. And I have really long arms, and a lot of people with autoimmune disease have long arms, and it's associated with autoimmune disease. And um, I, I have to wonder if going these gene changes that this starts would uh, help to um, cut down on autoimmune disease. Um, so it, all in all, it seems like uh, our bodies are very, very sensitive to whether we are getting good nutrition and whether we are socially dominant or not. And 
and they're really trying to you know make that call about which program they should run and I uh, I really want to hack the code because I think I I was born into a, a line of people and into a genetic and other situation that would have made me very subordinate and very had a very, very terrible life and I'm trying to uh, uh, conquer that and you know basically become one of the other people that I always used to look at and wish that I could be you know more attractive and more laid back and more um, confident and uh, it's really interesting to change and have that change slowly be happening so uh, I'm glad that I'm finding these things in the 20s and rather than you know later in life maybe I'll be able to take advantage of them.